Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaica News in Review U.S. tourists held up rob in Portland. Two tourists visiting from the United States were held up and robbed by men armed with knives in folly wounds in Portland on Monday. The male and female were robbed of cash and other personal items to purchase understand. One of the victims is a commercial fisherman and the other is a student. Both are 25 and are from Alaska. Police reports indicated that the tourists, who were vacationing in Portland, went to Winifred Beach in Ferry Hill in the parish and it started raining heavily so they decided to leave. Both boarded a white car which appeared to be operating as a taxi destined for Port Antonio. The driver took them to Folly Ruins, where they were approached by three masked men armed with knives. The men robbed them of Jamaican and US dollars, cellular phones, debit and credit cards. The robbers fled and the tourists were later helped to a police station where they made a report. Bail granted to man accused of murdering security guard in Hanover. A man who was arrested in connection with the shooting death of a security guard and the injury of another in a car along the Shetwood Main Road in Rambo, Hanover, in June was on Monday, offered one million bail. Steve McDonald was offered bail in the Hanover Circuit Court following an application by his attorney, Donahue Martin. He was ordered to stay away from Hanover and Westmoreland as a condition of his bail. In the meantime, McDonald's co accused, Tracy Wright, was remanded. McDonald, 35, of Lontop in Chester Castle, is charged with murder, possession of a prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and wounded with intent in relation to the murder of 43 year old Dwayne Barnes, a security guard of Awful Gully, Brickstead in St. James. The attack occurred on July 6. The Lucy police reported that about midday, Barnes was a passenger in a Nissan 80 walk on motor car when Armin pounced upon them. It is alleged that McDonald was among the group of men who opened gunfire at the vehicle, killing Barnes and injuring another man. An investigation commenced and McDonald was arrested and charged following a question and answer session in the presence of his attorney. PNP hoping investigation into former MP wife said will bring clarity and closure. The People's National Party PNP says it supports the ongoing investigation by law enforcement agencies into the death of Melissa Silvero, the wife of former PNP Member of Parliament, Jalan Silvero. It was previously reported that Silvero died in her sleep on November 10. In a release on Monday, the PNP said it is imperative to allow the authorities to conduct a thorough and impartial investigation into the matter. On Saturday, police confirmed that six weeks after Melissa passed in her sleep, her death is now being investigated as a possible murder. After the post-mortem, it was discovered that she was shot at least three times, Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of crime and security Fitzbilly told reporters on Saturday afternoon. It was also reported that Melissa's husband retained the services of a King's Council and that he was interviewed by a scene of crime investigators. We firmly believe in the rule of law and support the ongoing investigation by law enforcement agencies to ascertain the truth behind Melissa's untimely death, the release read. The opposition party reaffirmed its commitment to justice and trust in the legal process to provide clarity and closure in this tragic situation. 1,349 people murdered across the island up to December 16. 1,349 people were murdered across the island as of Saturday, December 16. That's according to the latest crime statistics on the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The number of murders represents an 8.2% decline when compared to a total of 1,469 murders for the similar period last year. All divisions recorded murders, with St. James leading the tally of 185, followed by St. Andrew Salt with 117. Meanwhile, there were also declines in rapes, robberies, and break ins. Cases of rape saw a 7.2% reduction. Robberies went down by 15.3% from 889 to 753, while break-ins decreased by 12.4% from 967 to 847. Woman killed in house fire in Grand Spain, St. Andrew. A female perished in a house fire on Shortwood Lane in Grand Spain, St. Andrew. Her identity has not yet been released. Preliminary police reports are that about 2.57 a.m., 
residents saw fire coming from a house and alerted the fire brigade. Upon their arrival, a one-bedroom boat structure was seen engulfing flames. During cooling down operations, the females' charred remains were found among the rubble. St. Elizabeth businessman arrested after police seized counterfeit rum. A St. Elizabeth businessman was taken into custody on Monday afternoon after investigators on the counterterrorism and organized crime investigation Spring Sea Talk seized more than 40 kits of counterfeit rum at his establishment in Santa Cruz. The seizure is valued at $1.4 million. Two other businesses were raided by Sea Talk detectives, but no illegal goods were found. The business operator who is being questioned is facing several charges including breaches of the Trademark and Consumer Protection Acts. Investigators say the sale of counterfeit rum poses a serious health risk to consumers and could damage the reputation of the trademark holder. Two arrested in relation to double murder in Goshen, St. Elizabeth. The St. Elizabeth police have taken two people into custody in connection with last week's double murder in Goshen. Deputy Superintendent Coleridge Minto, acting head of the St. Elizabeth Police Division, says arrangements are being made to question the suspects. On December 8, 46 year old fisherman Trevor Markon and his nephew, 29 year old Rajay Hilgon, were shot in a section of their home at Post Office Road, set ablaze alongside with a motor vehicle. Meanwhile, DSP Minter said two brothers were picked up on December 12 and 13 in Manchester in connection with a murder committed in St. Elizabeth earlier this year. He said the brothers are expected to be charged. The deputy superintendent was addressing the monthly meeting of the St. Elizabeth Municipal Corporation on Thursday. Woman killed in Mandela crash identified. A woman killed in a multi-vehicle crash along the Mandela Highway in St. Catherine on Saturday has been identified. The deceased is 23-year-old Sadija Williams of Clarendon address. Police report that about 5.45 a.m., Williams was a passenger in a Mercedes-Benz SUV traveling on the highway heading to St. Catherine when the vehicle collided into the wheel of a parked truck. As a result of the collision, the Benz careened and crashed into a Suzuki Vitara motor car that was traveling in the same direction. Williams suffered serious injuries and was pronounced dead at hospital. There were no more serious injuries, the police stated. Head of the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Assistant Commissioner of Police Gary McKenzie, said investigations are ongoing to see whether the fatal crash was a result of dangerous driving. We gather that the vehicle had just passed a speed checkpoint at 6 miles and investigation is being carried out to ascertain properly whether or not there was a manner of driving that amounts to the driving and causing the death by dangerous driving or manslaughter. It is understood that Williams had earlier this week returned to the island from the United States where she attended the University of South Florida. Alleged gang member among two killed in Brompton, St. Elizabeth. An alleged gang member was among two men who were shot and killed at a house in Cambridge District, Brompton, St. Elizabeth last evening. Dead is 50-year-old Donovan Bailey, who police say was on their radar, and his associate, Elvis McIntosh. Reports are that about 7.30 p.m., the men were at a house when they were pounced upon by armed men who shot them several times. Residents summoned the police and on their arrival, Bailey and McIntosh were seen suffering from gunshot wounds. They were pronounced dead at hospital. Meantime, head of the constabulary's communications unit, Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay told reporters that the murders are linked to an ongoing inter-gang conflict in the area. School boys among three charged for allegedly robbing Westmoreland shop. Two boys ages 15 and 17 are among three persons who were charged on Tuesday following a break-in in a shop on Bedford Street in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland last week. The boys are both students from Savannah Lamar. The third person is 19-year-old Arvel Morris from Froome in the parish. They have been charged with shop breaking and larceny. The incident reportedly occurred between 10.41 p.m. last Wednesday and 6.45 a.m. the following day. It was reported that a vendor locked up her shop and when she returned the following morning she discovered it had been broken into. Information which in reported indicated that clothing and accessories valued at $60,000 and a cell phone valued at $33,000 were discovered missing. Later that day, the police acted on information 
went to a premises where the three accused men were reported to found in possession of the stolen items. They were taken into custody and following investigations were subsequently charged. Hopewell High School Bursa Condon at School Gate The Bursa at the Hopewell High School in Hanover was shot and killed outside the institution yesterday afternoon. He was reportedly attacked by a lone gunman as he was leaving the school compound approximately 4 p.m. Lakovia High School mourned sudden death of public teacher. The Lakovia High School in St. Elizabeth has been plunged into mourning following the sudden death of its librarian and social studies teacher, Alexis Tomlinson. Tomlinson, 40, is suspected to have died in her sleep on Wednesday morning at her Belmont Westmoreland home. Reports were that about 7 a.m., Tomlinson's mother attempted to wake her, but she was unresponsive. She was rushed to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital where she was pronounced dead. Acting principal of the Lakovia High School, Andrew Morris, told reporters that Tomlinson was a very industrious teacher. Miss Tomlinson was a very hard-working teacher at the school. She was very bubbly. She was vibrant. She was someone who brought life to the school and the department, and she will be missed by all of us, Morris stated. Morris offered condolences to the educator's family. On behalf of the Lakovia High School Board of Covenants, the staff, both past and present, students past and present, I would like to say condolences to Miss Alexis' family and friends on her passing, Morris stated. I would want to urge all of us at this time to come together as we mourn her loss during this difficult period that we will continue to pray, pray for comfort, pray for strength, and that God will see us through this difficult period, he encouraged. Alleged gunman shot by cops in Clarendon a man was shot dead during an alleged confrontation with the police along the Osborne Store Main Road in Clarendon Tuesday afternoon. An illegal firearm was reportedly seized during the incident, the police stated. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, has launched a probe into the incident. The dead man has been identified as 24-year-old Davin Skeef, otherwise called Tutu, a resident of Osborne Store. Police reports indicated that around 4.10 p.m., a team of three police personnel from the Clarendon Division responded to information that gunmen were seen at a bar along the roadway. On their arrival, one member of the team reported they entered the bar while others gave cover. It was reported that on entering the bar, Scape was seen coming in from a rear door. He reportedly pointed a gun at the policeman, who, in fear for his life, discharged his service weapon, hitting the now deceased. Scape, it was further reported, fell backwards and make another attempt to shoot at the policeman while lying on the ground. Another member of the police party who was outside discharged his service weapon at him. A 9mm semi-automatic pistol was reported taken from the injured man. He was rushed to the Maypen Hospital, where he succumbed to his injuries. No member of the police team nor any of the patrons in the bar were injured. Attorney Asad Buchanan granted stay of two years suspension. Attorney at law Asa Buchanan was granted a stay of two years suspension from practicing law. The stay was granted by the Court of Appeal pending the outcome of his appeal against the suspension period imposed by the Disciplinary Committee of the General Legal Council, GLC, which has been described as excessive. Case management conference is set for July next year, and after that, a date will be set for the hearing of the appeal. Following the stay, Buchanan will now be able to practice and will be able to go to the United Kingdom Privy Council to represent Dancel Artist Vibes Cartel, who is appealing against his murder conviction. Buchanan was suspended this month after he was found guilty of professional misconduct for offensive comments he made against the Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn. He pleaded guilty in November to breaching ethic rules that guided the conduct of attorneys authorized to practice in Jamaica. He also admitted breaching the canons of the legal profession Canons of Professional Ethic Rules. While co-hosting a program on YouTube in August, Buchanan had quoted from the works of Vibes Carter's Salminance, in which he, Cartel, director of the DPP, performed a sexual act. Attorney at law John Clark instructed by King's Counsel Valvanita Roberts represented Buchanan. Sandra Minot Phillips, KC, and Simone Mayhem, KC, represented the GLC. Police Federation Chairman begins contempt of court proceedings in continued bid to be reinstated. Chairman of the Jamaica Police Federation, Corporal James, filed an application in the Supreme Court seeking to have Assistant Commissioner of Police, Angel Lewis, 
committed to prison for failing to comply with a court order. James has stated in his affidavit that Lewis has failed to comply with a November 17 Supreme Court order that be made immediately reinstated to his job with full pay. Justice Tara Carr had made the order for reinstatement when she granted James leave to go to the Judicial Review Court to seek to squash the decision of the police high command that he be indicted, which reduced pay for comments he made at a funeral of his colleague. The rule of law says no one is above the law, and in this case, court orders must be respected, says attorney at law Hugh Wellman, who is representing James. Lewis, who is being represented by King's Counsel Peter, has filed an appeal against last month's order. James stated in his application for a contempt of court that Peter had said in reader comment that there is non-compliance with the formal order because there is a pending appeal to the decision of the learned judge. In the court document, James states that there is no appeal on the judge's decision. Even if there was an appeal, an appeal does not operate as a stay. Therefore, there is no legal basis for failure to comply with the order of the learned judge that the application that the applicant be immediately reinstated with full pay, James outlined in his application. James states that the failure to comply with the court order is a warrant disregard of the court order which amounts to a contempt of court with the only remedy being imprisonment. King's counsel Peter told reporters on Tuesday that the application for leave to appeal the Supreme Court order is set for January 21. He said his office was served with the papers of the contempt of court proceedings and he will deal with the issue in due course. James was inducted in July for comments he made at the funeral of a colleague. He had criticized the police high command for not paying cops their overtime money. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily Notice a shortage, says Tufton amid U.S. women's complaints. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has requested an update to gain clarity on a recent incident where a U.S. woman shared her dissatisfaction with the level of health care she received at a local hospital. In a now viral video, the woman expressed frustration over the unmet request for tissue, highlighting a shortage in the hospital's bathrooms. I need some tissue. I have been asking for tissue since I've been here. There is no tissue in any of the bathrooms. No one is giving me any tissue, she said. I also need another diaper. I'm actually mad because I'm using paper towels. They should not be like pulling teeth, she said. Also heard seen before being informed that the items she was requesting were considered personal items. In response to the video, Dr. Tufton said on his Twitter page that he has requested an update on the situation emphasizing that tissue is always provided for patients. Tufton also highlighted that it is against hospital policy for videos to be taken inside facilities. The minister emphasized that tissue is generally provided for the patients but due to instances of patients taking tissue from the bathroom, it is sometimes often upon request. He also denied rumors of a current tissue shortage, stating that the Western Regional Health Authority warehouse in Montego Bay has over 1,700 cases of domestic tissue in stock and 1,500 cases on order. The tissues are distributed weekly to all hospitals, Tufton stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.